you have to understand in our world, for a Muslim to come to faith in Jesus Christ, to leave Islam, you lose your culture, family, job, home, sometimes your life. I was taught that, uh, and I believed that uh, there was four books that came from heaven, but the final book was the Quran, and it was the final revelation. And so I used to go to study the Quran after school for three to four hours at a time every single day because uh, my family wanted me to be ingrained with, with, with the truth of, of what I believed. And so Islam was not something that I was apathetic towards or even indifferent towards. It was my very way and my very being. While I was working in a Muslim masjid as an imam, as a parish priest, once I preached in my parish that Jesus Christ is not God. For me, God was only Allah. And I believe Allah never married, so no son for Allah. So I preached there that Jesus is not God. Then somebody asked me, who is Jesus? From the crowd. Maybe a Muslim, but he asked me, who is Jesus? I was preaching he is not God, but the question, who is he? To know who is he, I read the entire Quran once again. 114 chapters, 6,666 verses in Quran. When I read it, the name of Prophet Muhammad, I found in Quran four places, but the name of Jesus, I found 25 places. There itself, I was little confused. Why Quran giving more preference for Jesus? And second thing, I could not see any women's name in Quran, Prophet Muhammad's mother's name or wife's name or children's name, no. In the Quran there is only one woman name I found, Maryam, the mother of Jesus, no other woman name. And this is important because everything I had ever learned about Christianity, I had learned from my Imam, from my uh, Masjid, from my mosque, from my leadership, every single one of them. And, and, and every caricature that I held was based on caricatures that other people had held. And the one thing I remember as a Muslim was that I was always opposed or, or brought up to oppose the deity of who Jesus is. The Quran talked about Jesus, but we could never call him the Son of God. Uh, that was blasphemy. In fact, that was the greatest sin that any Muslim could ever commit was to confess that Jesus is the Son of God. Now in Islam, the greatest sin you can commit and you can never be forgiven for that is doubting God himself, doubting his teachings, doubting his prophet. And I had done that. And in Islam, they teach you that Allah never visits, God never visits human beings. So I asked him, what is your name? Jesus Christ, the living God, he answered. And the moment he spoke those words, it was as if every single bone was taken out of my body and I just fell on my face to the ground and I started weeping in the presence of God. I just wept. I still can't eat this. 18 years have gone by, but I still can't forget. His love, His mercy, and all the I'm forgiven. I fell on my face. I just wept because for many years I had tried to please God, but that wasn't nothing I had done was pleasing to God. They told me, "Go to Lufi Sabila Law, kill in the way of Allah." Then this God says, love in the way of me, forgive in the way of me. And it was everything my heart existed for and said, yes, this is the truth of God. God is about forgiveness. God is about love. And the pastor says, what do you think about Jesus? And I said, in Isa, his name is Isa in Islam. We respect Isa. As a matter of fact, we named the 19th uh, surah of the Quran after his mother, Surah Miriam. He said, you can't respect Jesus. It's something that I tell Muslims when they say, no, we hold him in high reverence and high respect. You cannot respect Jesus. Because Jesus declared himself to be God. Isa ab Messiah. Jesus said he was Messiah. And more than just Messiah to the Jew, but he came to die for the world. If Jesus said these things, he is not qualified to be a prophet in Islam. 
to summarize it, he said, you either revere him as God or reject him as a fraud, but you don't have the option of just respecting him. That door opened. He asked me this question. He said, Islam teaches that Jesus wasn't crucified. Yes, Surah 4, verse 157, Esau was not crucified, but somebody else in his place. He said, why would Jesus be indicted of a crime worthy of crucifixion to begin with? Was it trumped up charges? No. Was it blasphemy? Yes. What's blasphemy? In every debate that I've done, in every time I've debated Muslim, Sunni, Sufi, Alawite, uh, Shia, every debate I've ever done, this question always comes up from the Muslim. What does one man's death have to do with me? But you see, in Islam, there is a measure of this. If I die to further Islam, I am helping my children, I am helping um, my family, I am helping future generations. So my death does, in fact, resonate throughout Islam. The question I ask them is, what would Jesus' death resonate for you? So Quran gives the name for Jesus, Word of God, Spirit of God, Jesus Christ. And then Quran says that Jesus spoke when he was very small, like two days old after his birth. He began to speak. Quran says that Jesus created a live bird with mud. He took some mud, formed a bird, when he breathed it into it became a live bird. So I think that he can give life. He give life to a mud, clay. And then Quran says that Jesus cured a man born blind and a man with leukoderma, leprosy, etc. Continuously Quran says that Jesus give life to dead people. Jesus went to heaven, he is still alive and he will come again. When I saw all these things in Quran, my thinking was what the Quran says about uh, Muhammad. You know, according to Quran, Prophet Muhammad is not the word of God, not the spirit of God, never spoke when he was two days old, never created any bird with mud, never cured any sick people, never raised any dead people. He himself died. And according to Islam, he is not alive and he will not come back. So there is a lot of difference between these two prophets. On the last day, Yawm al qiyamah as it is said in the Quran, where we will all be judged. No man can find their way into heaven, even Muslims, on their own merit. It has to be by God's grace. Even the Prophet of Islam said to pray for his forgiveness many times a day because he doesn't know if he's going to enter into heaven or not. Only by God's grace will he enter into heaven. That grace that even Muslims are relying on on that last day to enter into heaven is the same grace that Christians are relying on. The only difference is that Christians believe that grace has already been given. On that cross, 2,000 years ago, He provided that grace for us. The same grace, not a different one. We just have to find it in our hearts to search for that in a true, open manner, and we'll find out. I have full faith that everybody who asks God in an open heart to show them the truth will be shown the truth. Fear of death is actually a foolishness. If you believe in Muhammad and I, you know what will be your situation? Prophet Muhammad died, people buried, and afterwards we don't know where he went. If I believe in him and die, I don't know where I will go. But Christ, who died, but he came back. So I have a hope, if I die in Christ, I can come back. So it is better be sure of death, and that should be in Christ. Because Jesus very clearly said, I am going to my father's house, Romans, uh, sorry, John chapter 14, verse 3. My suggestion to a Muslim man or a woman is, I know they ask, is Jesus Christ God? Can a human being become God? Of course, never, no human being can become God. But, I believed even as a Muslim in an almighty God. God, the great God, that can do anything and everything. But can a God, this great God, become man? Can he show himself in the body of a man? Yes, he can.